Hi everyone, this is Mavic Poa, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to sketch the titration curve for a weak acid strong base reaction. Now the reaction that we have is here. We have inside the conical flask or our analyte, CH3COH or ethanoic acid. The concentration is 0.1 mol per dm3. Volume is 25 cm3. Ka for simplicity's sake. Let us just say that the Ka value for this weak acid will be 10 to the power of minus 5 mole per dm cube. Now what we have inside the buren or the titrant will be our strong base sodium hydroxide. Concentration of NaOH in this case is 0.1 mole per dm cube. Now if I want to sketch the titration curve for this weak acid strong base reaction, then how do we go about doing that? Now in general, we have three points that we will want to plot. The first one is the initial pH. Initial pH is just the pH of the analyte. So in this case, what will be the pH of this weak acid before we start the titration? The second point is the equivalence point. Now equivalence point is when exact amounts of titran is added to completely neutralize our analyte. So in this case, we need to determine what is the volume of NaOH that is required to completely neutralize our weak acid. And we also want to estimate the pH of this equivalence point. Then the third point will be maximum buffering capacity. So we need to determine first if I have a weak acid strong base reaction, where is the buffer region? Is it before complete neutralization or after complete neutralization? Then maximum buffering capacity is when the concentration of the weak acid and the conjugate base is exactly the same. And we can determine the pH of the buffer at maximum buffering capacity. Alright, let's go through this part by part. The first point that we want to determine is our initial pH. Now, as mentioned, initial pH is just the pH of our weak acid, CH3COH, before we start the titration. We have the concentration, 0.1 mol per dm3. We have the K value, 10 to the power of minus 5 mol per dm3. Now, if we know that this is a weak acid, then we can just apply this formula to determine the H plus concentration of this weak acid very easily. H plus concentration will just be the square root of Ka multiplied by concentration of weak acid. With this formula, it is just an issue of substitution. I can determine the H plus concentration. H plus concentration will be the square root of Ka, which is 10 to the power of minus 5. So this will be here. Weak acid concentration is 0.1 mol per dm3, which will be here. So I can work this out and I get 10 to the power of minus 3 mol per dm3 for H plus concentration. Then finding pH is straightforward. pH will just be the minus log of H plus concentration. So it will be minus log 10 to the power of minus 3, which will work out to be pH equals to 3. So what we have now is the pH of this weak acid before the titration. So we can put it on the titration curve. So the titration curve or the pH curve is here. Our y-axis will be pH because we are measuring the pH of the solution as the reaction proceeds. Then the x-axis will be the volume of the titran, which in this case will be the volume of NaOH. Because as we add the titran from the buren, the resultant solution will change, the pH of the solution will change, so we want to measure how the pH of the resultant solution changes as we add more and more titran. Then we have some guidelines which is useful for us to plot the titration curve. We have pH equal to 7 line, because this indicates the neutral point. We have pH equals to 3, which is 4 units below 7. And we have pH equals to 11, which is 4 units above pH equals to 7. So these three pH lines, pH 3, pH 7, pH 11, it would be useful for us to sketch the titration curve of any acid-base reaction. We also have this vertical line, which is the volume of equivalence the volume of NaOH that is required to completely neutralize the weak acid in this case. So let us put in the initial pH. I know that the initial pH will just be equals to 3, so which we have already indicated here. So maybe let me just highlight this. pH equals to 3 is the first point that we want to plot. Now how about the second point, the equivalence point? Now equivalence point, we know that this is a weak acid strong base reaction. There are two coordinates that we want to determine for equivalence point the volume coordinate and the pH coordinate. Now the volume coordinate is the volume of equivalence. What is the volume of NaOH that is required to completely neutralize 25 cm3 of CH3COOH? 
Now this is just solution stoichiometry. It's very straightforward. I know that both of them are monoprotic, monoprotic acid versus monoprotic base. So therefore, the number of mole of NOH and CH3COH required for reaction will be the same. Number of mole of NOH equals to the number of mole of CH3COH. Number of mole is equal to concentration multiplied by volume. So the concentration of NOH multiplied by VEQ, the volume of NOH that is required to completely neutralize the weak acid, it will be equal to concentration of the weak acid multiplied by the volume of the weak acid, which is 25 cm cube. Since concentration for both cases are the same, then the volume will also be the same. The volume of NOH that is required to completely neutralize the weak acid will also be equal to 25 cm cube. Now this portion determining VEQ is very simple. It is just solution stoichiometry. Now the next part is to determine the pH of the equivalence point. The simpler method, that means if we don't talk about concept, we just want to have a very straightforward way to determine the pH of equivalence point is just follow the strong guy. That means if I have an acid-base reaction, the equivalence point will just follow the strong acid or the strong base. So for this example that we have, since it is a weak acid strong base reaction, the equivalence point will follow the strong base. So it will be alkaline. And if it is alkaline, unless the question asks us to calculate the equivalence point explicitly, usually we will just do an estimate. If it is alkaline, then we just say that it is roughly two units above pH equals to seven. So it is roughly pH equals to nine. So this is the simpler method. If the question doesn't require us to do any explanation, of course, if the question asks us to explain, then the concept falls under salt hydrolysis. This acid-base reaction will produce this salt, sodium ethanoate, and CH3COO minus. It is the conjugate base of a weak acid, CH3COOH, or Na plus is neutral because Na plus comes from a strong base. So CH3CO minus, it is the conjugate base of a weak acid. Since this is a conjugate base, obviously it will release OH minus in solution. You dissociate in water to give OH minus. If I want to write out the dissociation, then this will be a reversible sign because a conjugate base is just a weak base. CH3 CO minus plus water dissociates partially to give me CH3 COH plus OH minus. Since it releases OH minus, the solution is alkaline. So the equivalence point is alkaline. pH is again estimated to be roughly about 9. All right, now we can put the second point, the equivalence point. Volume is at 25 cm cube and the pH is at 9. So we have this point here. This will be our equivalence point. And usually at complete neutralization, there will be a rapid change in the pH of the solution. So what we can do is we can also reflect inside this graph. Since the equivalence point is alkaline, then the range of rapid pH change. At 25 cm cube, we will expect the pH of the solution to increase very rapidly. And we can use this guideline that we have here. Since the equivalence point is in the alkaline region, we just indicate the range of rapid pH change to jump from pH 7 all the way to pH 11. So this pH equals to 7 guideline here to pH equals to 11 guideline here. And you notice the equivalence point will be at the midpoint of this range of rapid pH change. pH 9 is the midpoint between pH 7 to pH 11. All right, next, let's look at maximum buffering capacity, point number three. Now, point number three, what is important is we cannot assume that the buffer region is always before complete neutralization. We actually need this concept for us to determine where the buffer region is. I need to know if I have an acid-base reaction, when is the resultant solution a buffer solution? Now, if I have a weak acid strong base reaction, when the weak acid is in excess, the resultant solution will be a buffer solution. Because for buffer, I need a mixture of weak acid and salt of conjugate base. So if it is a reaction between weak acid and strong base, I would need excess weak acid plus limiting strong base so that the limiting strong base will convert some of this weak acid to the salt of conjugate base. And I will have some weak acid left because it is in excess to form this mixture of weak acid and salt of conjugate base. So in this case, what we need to know is if I have a reaction between excess weak acid and limiting strong base, then the resultant solution will be a buffer solution. Now, similarly, if I have a weak base strong acid reaction, if the weak base is in excess, then the resultant solution again will be a buffer solution. 
Now, if I look back at this scenario, now if I look at the weak acid, because the focus is on excess weak acid, since the weak acid is inside the conical flask, when I add VEQ of NaOH, I will completely neutralize all the weak acid inside the conical flask. Before that happens, the weak acid will be in excess because before complete neutralization, when I add strong base, some of the weak acid is being reacted off. I still have some weak acid left. That is why I need to continue to add this titrant or I need to continue to add the strong base to continue the titration until I reach complete neutralization. So whatever that's inside the conical flask, you will be in excess before complete neutralization. Whatever that's inside the titrant, you will be in excess after complete neutralization. So I would know in this case that the weak acid is in excess before VEQ. So therefore the buffer region is there. The buffer should be before complete neutralization. Now, once we have determined the buffer region, which is before VEQ, then the next thing we want to determine is how do I calculate the maximum buffering capacity? For MBC, our maximum buffering capacity, it is fairly straightforward. The volume will be half equivalence, 12.5 cm cube. The pH for maximum buffering capacity, pH is just equals to pKa, it will be minus log 10 to the power of minus 5, or pH will be equal to 5. So again, back to this graph, what we want to plot now will be the maximum buffering capacity. Again, MBC is at volume equals to 12.5 cm cube, half equivalence. pH is equals to pH 5, pH equals to pKa. So I'll have this point here, and this will mark the maximum buffering capacity. Now take note for MBC, the gradient at that point is equals to zero. So later we know that this will just be a point of inflection. All right, now we have all the points necessary for us to sketch this titration curve. So let's just put everything together. Now remember, we need three points. The first point will be the initial pH, which in this case will be pH equals to three, at volume equals to zero. The second point is the equivalence point where volume equals to 25 cm cube, pH is estimated to be pH nine. And the range of rapid pH change, that means this vertical increase in the pH of the solution at complete neutralization, we will just use the two guidelines here, pH 7 all the way to pH 11. Maximum buffering capacity, point number three, we have determined that the buffer region is before complete neutralization and the volume is at half equivalence, 12.5 cm cube, pH is equal to 5. Now, as mentioned previously, the point at maximum buffering capacity, gradient at that point is equal to zero. So this will be a point of inflection. So we can sketch the first part of the titration curve from pH equals to three. Then at MBC, the gradient is equal to zero, then all the way to volume of equivalence. All right, so the first part of the titration curve is here. The second part is straightforward. Since at VEQ, there should be a very big increase in the pH of the solution the pH will shoot up from pH 7 all the way to pH 11. All right, so here's the second part of the titration curve. The last part of the titration curve is if I continue to add more sodium hydroxide, the pH of the solution will continue to go up. So we just draw this increase in the pH of the solution. And be careful we don't draw the pH of the solution increase too steeply because when I add more sodium hydroxide, the pH of the solution will just tend to the pH of sodium hydroxide, which is pH equals to 13. All right, so the last portion of the titration curve is here. So you notice with these three points that we've mentioned, the initial pH, the equivalence point, and the maximum buffering capacity, we can sketch out a very decent looking titration curve. Now that was the discussion involving sketching the titration curve of a weak acid strong base reaction. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.